Melbourne's vicious gangland war has claimed another life. A prominent Melbourne crime figure was gunned down this morning in front of his children. In the 2000s, Melbourne was in the grips of a gangland war. There's been another gangland killing in Melbourne. With rival drug factions involved in a series of revenge killings. The main players in the conflict became household names. Carl Williams, the Moran family and Tony Mockbell each vying for the lion's share of Melbourne's lucrative illicit drug market. It may be difficult to remember just what Melbourne was like at the time, but the gangland wars were all consuming and police investigators were desperate to put the whole saga to an end once and for all. So they decided to do something radical, something many thought inconceivable, never been done before. They recruited a high profile gangland lawyer to snitch on her own clients. It was accordingly a desperate and dangerous time, and a genuine sense of urgency was enveloping the criminal justice system, including police. The high profile barrister was assigned to the codename Informer 3838. We now know she was first registered as far back as 1995, and there were other lawyer informants too. She told police investigators secrets about gangland figures, many her own clients. The most high profile was drug kingpin Tony Mockbell, who's serving 30 years for running the drug syndicate known as The Company. She claimed to have helped snare those behind the world's biggest ecstasy drug bust, Rob Caram and Pasquale Barbaro. And after the execution of gangland figure Victor Pierce, she says she helped secure a conviction against her former client, Farouk Orman. My name is Ruth Parker. I'm a criminal solicitor and the principal of Galbley Rolf. I represent Farouk Orman, who was convicted of the murder of Victor Pierce. He has always maintained his innocence and was represented by Informer 3838. In total, Informer 3838 has boasted to have helped police arrest and convict 386 criminals. The reason that everybody should be outraged, it fundamentally undermines the system of a fair trial. If people are not provided with a fair trial, then the entire structure of democracy becomes a fallacy. So why did the lawyer risk it all to help the police? Well, after years of representing some of the worst gangland figures, she felt trapped in the criminal world of her clients. She was frustrated with the way criminals use the system and she wanted to be rid of the Mockbell cartel. And how do we know all this? After learning about Informer 3838, Victoria's Chief Public Prosecutor wanted to warn a number of convicted criminals that their case may be tainted because their lawyer was, in fact, a police informer. Victoria Police has pushed to keep this all under wraps, arguing the lawyer's life could be put in danger. It spent millions of dollars in legal fees, trying to keep the whole thing suppressed. But last year, the High Court resolved the matter once and for all. It ruled that the lawyer's actions were appalling breaches of her obligations that Victoria Police were guilty of reprehensible conduct and that maintenance of the integrity of the criminal justice system demands that the information be disclosed. The High Court was outraged because it fundamentally undermines a fair trial and if a fair trial has been abused or affected by perjury or fraud by the police and by a lawyer, then it undermines democracy itself and it's terrifying. The Royal Commission has been set up to investigate how many cases have been tainted due to this ugly saga to uncover who knew what and when and whether something like this could ever happen again. It'll put people like former Chief Commissioner Simon Overland under the spotlight. He led Victoria Police's campaign to end the bloody gangland wars. While others, such as Chief Commissioner Gray Ashton, admitted he knew about Informer 3838 when he was overseeing a gangland investigation with the now defunct Office of Police Integrity. People walking on the street should understand that you don't care until it happens to you. Would you want this to happen to your child or your uncle or your brother? And if not, then human rights apply to all of us, not just to those people that we think are favourable. Power has to be controlled to prevent people's liberty from being deprived by police members acting corruptly or inappropriately.